Hiya, it's Zoe. So, of course, I'm still studying and I'm just doing these back to back. I need to get better at like actually like editing things so I can just like make one giant video and just crop them. Uh, but no, that's too much work. Um, I'm gonna take a step back from dynamics because I really don't have anything else to make videos over at the moment. So I'm gonna do bone and joint infections for pathology. Well, pathophys and therapeutics. Um, so bone and joint infections can um, cause significant morbidity and require very complex treatment strategies. And treatment often includes both surgical and long-term IV and uh, antibiotics. Um, some bone and joint infections include septic arthritis, osteomyelitis, and prosthetic joint infection. Um, current concerns with treatment include ESBL producing organisms and carbapenemases. Uh, so, starting off with joint infections such as septic or infectious arthritis, um, the uh, etiology, um, infection with microorganisms usually in a single joint, for example monoarticular infections but uh, can affect more than one, uh, usually caused by bacteria but can also include fungal and mycobacterial infections. They often occur in individuals uh, older than 16 years, but occur um, about 25% in those less than 15. Uh, they mostly, uh, most commonly affected joints are the knee, which is the most, because it's a, the, probably one of the most weight-bearing, um, followed by hip, ankle, elbow, wrist, and shoulder. Some risk factors for adults ages um, greater than 80 years, uh, diabetes, pre-existing arthritis such as rheumatoid arthritis, uh, prosthetic joints, IV drug abuse, skin infection and cutaneous ulcers, recent joint surgery and distal distant infection, as well as some others such as animal bites, um, other trauma or indirect inoculation during surgery. Uh, some of the causative agents, so starting off the gram positive is Staph aureus, which is the most common cause in most age groups and can be caused by skin infection, uh, previously damaged joint, prosthetic joint, or IV drug use. Uh, coagulase neg negative Staphylococcus uh, are usually due to a prosthetic joint. Streptococcus is the second most common organism. Uh, you see strep pyogenes um, is very common in children less than five and as well as some strep pneumo and uh, group B strep is common in infants. Uh, Gram-negative E. coli is um, common in the elderly, IV drug users, and the seriously ill. Pseudomonas arginosa is for IV drug users, not for, it's not for IV drug users, but you see it commonly in IV drug users or penetrating trauma through the shoe. Necessaria gonorrhea is one of the most common cause of septic arthritis in young sexually active adults. Uh, and you can also see um, Haemophilus influenza, Pasteurella multicida, and Echinella cordens. <laughs> And the fungi that you can see um, is just any fungi, uh, fungal species um, for patients in an immunocompromised state. Uh, the pathophys, um, the spread of an infection um, is usually from an adjacent bone infection, uh, direct contamination of the joint space, and hematogenous <laughs> dissemination, uh, which accounts for the majority of infections. Um, usually the synovial fluid is highly vascular um, and there's no basement membrane for so organisms in the blood can easily get into the synovial fluid. Uh, when bacteria gain access they then multiply and produce a persistent purulent effusion within the joint. If purulent if effusion is present uh, greater than seven days then damage can occur. Effusion promotes cartilage destruction by an increased leukocyte enzyme activity in the, uh, in the protolytic enzymes within the effusion and pressure. Necrosis can lead to cartilage and bone damage. Uh, clinical indication is uh, fever, a painful swollen joint in the absence of a trauma, and uh, symptoms are minimal in order and 
older immunosuppressant or debilitated patients. Uh, physical exam, we usually see effusion, uh, restriction of joint move, motion, tenderness, and warmth. Uh, so the diagnosis of septic arthritis, some of the laboratory findings. So if you run a um, WBC with differential, you see an increase of white blood cells and a left shift. Uh, gram stain, uh, you need to do blood cultures. Um, you need to aspirate the joint and some non-specific diagnostic markers such as ESR and C CRP. So with the um, just something to kind of tell you what is going on with the synovial fluid um, analysis. So mm -hmm. so normal. I'm gonna start off with normal, okay. Um, so the volume is usually less than 3.5 mils. Clarity, it's usually transparent. Color is clear. Viscosity is high. The white blood cells is usually uh, less than 200. Uh, Polymorphonucleic uh, neutrophils is less than 25%. Cultures are negative. Uh, total protein is 1 to 2. And glucose is nearly equal to the blood. And inflammatory or gout. Um, the volume is often greater than 3.5 mils. It's uh, the clarity. It's usually translucent and opaque. Color is yellow to um, opalescent. Uh, but viscosity is low. White blood cells are anywhere from a thousand to a hundred thousand. Um, P uh, PMNs, which is neutrophils, um, is greater than or equal to 50 percent. Culture is negative. Um, Total protein is three to five. Uh, glucose is greater than 25 milligrams, uh, lower than the blood. And then for septic arthritis, um, the volume is often greater than 3.5 mils. Um, it's usually pretty opaque in terms of clarity. The color is usually yellow to green. Uh, the viscosity is variable. Uh, the white blood cell is, I hate this room so much, the light keeps going out. Okay, where was I? White blood cells, uh, 25,000 to greater than 100,000 white blood cells. Uh, neutrophils is greater than or equal to 75%. Culture is often positive. Total protein is 3.5, it's 325, not 0.5. And glucose is less than uh, 25 milligrams uh, lower than the blood. So the treatment approach for septic arthritis is using appropriate antibiotics, which is based on the likely organisms suspected, gram stain and clinical presentation, as well as joint damage, so you need to do a closed needle aspiration, which is recommended for all infected joints except for the hip. Uh, you can repeat every five to seven days until no further um, accumulation. Uh, open drainage are required for hip infections, and you need to rest the joint, which makes sense. So, for a gram positive cocci, um, the treatment is IV Vank, uh, Dapto, or Linazolid for 14 to 28 days. But um, if you're going to switch off, which you can't do with Vank, uh, to uh, PO, um, you need to do that after 14 days. If you're worried, um, if the organism is MRSA, you do IV bank, Dapto, Linazolid, Clindamycin, Bactrim, and then you do uh, Trimethoprim plus Rifampin for three to four weeks. Uh, Gram-negative bacilli, you want to do something like Rocephin, Ceftazidine, any third gen uh, Cephalosporin for 14 to 28 days, but if you're going to try to switch them off to oral, you want to do... Um, IV for the first 14 days. So if there's great, if uh, the gram stain came back ne negative, so there's no organism that's identified, you want to give get Vank plus Row 7 for 14 to 28 days. I'm going to try to slide back on. Up, down, up, down, up, down. I'm getting a, a workout in today. Jenny, get a slide down back on. Ah. Uh, monitoring uh, resolution 
uh, signs and symptoms of infection, um, as well as the um, antibiotic toxicities. So with vancomycin, you want to monitor renal dysfunction and um, Redman syndrome. Daptomycin, vomiting and diarrhea, constipation, increased uh, CPK and anemia. Linazolid, you want to monitor for a headache, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, increased uh, transaminases, slight risk of serotonin syndrome with other serotonergic agents. Clindamycin, you mainly want to look for GI disturbances. And Bactrim, you want to look for a rash, increased potassium, leukopenia, and renal dysfunction. I was holding my breath. I was like, look, can I do it all in one breath? <laughs> infections uh, for mainly osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is infection of the bone with subsequent bone destruction, around 20 cases per 100,000. Acute is diagnosed um, uh, within like two weeks of the onset of symptoms, and a chronic is greater than two weeks since the onset of symptoms and can persist for years, um, have some treatment failures. Uh, and some relapses are very common with it. Uh, the recurrence rate is about 20%. Characteristics, so you can have a matogenous, contagious, or vascular insufficiency to help it spread. Help it spread. So for the hematogenous spread, um, it's spread of bacteria through the blood stream from a distant site. Uh, the patient population you see it in is children under 16 with in the uh, femur, tibia, humerus, and vertebrae. Some predisposing factors is bacteremia, mainly with IV catheters, IVDA, skin infections, uh, URI, as well as sickle cell anemia. The contagious spread is a spread of bacteria from an adjacent tissue infection or by direct inoculation. You usually see it in adults 25 to 50 years in the femur or tibia and skull or Fever and tibia skull. So I think like the top, put the tibia, I think, maybe. Uh, open reduction of fractures is a predisposing factor. Fractures, uh, gunshot wound, dental sinus infection, and soft tissue infection. And lastly, uh, vascular insufficiencies. Um, infection that results from insufficient blood supply to fight the bacteria. Mainly see it in patients uh, greater than 50 years of age. Some predisposing factors is diabetes, um, PVD, and post-cabbage, so sternum, sternum ostomy, sternectomy, ostomy, I don't remember what it is. Okay, so the common pathogen, so if, with a hematogenous spread, it's usually monomicrobial. So in children, you see staph aureus, staph epidermidis, um, no, that's not that's staph, that's strep epidermidis. Streptogenes, strep pneumonia, H. influenzae, Pseudomonas arginosa, and Enterobacter, such as E. coli. Adults, uh, Staph aureus and gram negative bacilli with sickle cell anemia. We usually see Salmonella, as pneumonia, and with IV drug users, you see Pseudomonas arginosa. Uh, contagious spread uh, usually is a mixed infection. Uh, Staph aureus, Strep epidermidis, Streptococcus. Uh, gram negative bacilli, pseudomonas arginosa with uh, foot punctures, proteus, klebsiella, and E. coli, and an anaerobic uh, such as human bites and decubitus ulcers. Vascular insufficiency is usually uh, polymicrobial uh, with staph aureus, uh, strep epidermidis, streptococcus, uh, gram negative bacilli, and anaerobes such as uh, bacterioids, uh, fragilis group. Uh, with an infected uh, prosthesis, it's usually Staph aureus or Strep epidermidis. Uh, diagnosis of osteomyelitis is a um, golf clinical presentation, so the si usual signs and symptoms. Fever, chill, tenderness, localized pain, swelling, neurological symptoms if the spinal cord is compressed. Uh, lab studies is white blood cells, ESR, and CRP. 
imaging studies is an MRI, CT, and x-ray, but not for acute osteomyelitis, and you need to identify the microorganism. So if it's a blood culture, you need a blood culture or a bone biopsy. Uh, goals of therapy is to eradicate the infection, restore function, and reduce pain. Treatment is usually long-term IV, uh, high-dose antibiotic therapy due to risk of relapse, second-degree bacterial invasion of host defenses while contained within the biofilm. Causes an increase in antibiotic resistance, increased risk associated with IV catheters, increased cost of long-term IV therapy. Uh, if patient is stable, start antibiotics after the cultures are drawn. Um, therapy initiated based on suspected microorganisms though. So for newborns, the likely organism is Strep aureus, strep B, strep, uh, group B, strep, and E. coli. So the antibiotic you would use is nafacillin or oxacillin plus uh, cefotoxine. Uh, children less than or equal to five years of age, if they're vaccinated for H. influenzae, it's usually a uh, type uh, B. Staph aureus or strep. So you uh, you treat it with uh, nafacillin, oxacillin, or ANSEF. If they have not been vaccinated, you want to use uh, vaccinated against H. influenzae. You want to use cefiroxine. If the children are greater than five, the most likely organism is Staph aureus. And you want to treat it with nafacillin, oxacillin, and ANSEF. Adults, usually Staph aureus, nafacillin, oxacillin, or ANSEF. IV drug use is pseudomonas, you want to use Cipro, Ceftazidine, or Cefepime. Patients with sickle cell, it's usually Salmonella. You want to treat it with, ever, with either Bercepin or Cefotaxime. Patients with vascular insufficiencies um, for gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. Uh, nafacillin or oxacillin or ANSEF plus aptazidine or cefepime. Um, if anaerobes are suspected, you want to do uh, cefetitan or clinda plus ceftaz or cefepime. Uh, treatment duration, if it's acute, you can do 46 weeks IV or PO, but 8 weeks if uh, it's MRSA. Chronic, you want to do 6 to 8 weeks of IV therapy plus 3 to 12 months of oral therapy. If a debridement is not performed, it's uh, six to eight weeks plus an additional one to three weeks of oral combination therapy with rifampin and an additional suspected, uh, susceptible oral agent. So if it's MRSA, you can either do VANC for greater than eight weeks, DAPTO for greater than eight weeks, Bactrim for greater than eight weeks, uh, linazolid for greater than eight weeks, and clindamycin for greater than eight weeks. Uh, some recommend additional one to three months or longer with rifampin, plus an additional agent based on susceptibilities. Oral, oral therapy for osteomyelitis um, is a criteria for effective oral therapy, which is a confirmed osteomyelitis adherence is ensured. Initial clinical response to IV antibiotics and suitable oral agent is available. Uh, vertebral osteomyelitis is an infection of the spine, often involves the extension of disc space between vertebrae and discitis. Uh, significant m and uh, risk factors is age, oh crap, uh, diabetes, IV drug use, immunocompromised, indwelling IV devices, and increased prevalence of orthopedic prosthetic devices. Causes is an um, infection spread from a transient bacteremia, infection from a distant focus of infection, trauma, or surgery. Most common organism in the vertebrae is Staph aureus. Um, if it's a U if it's UTI based, like if it's the patient had a untreated UTI and it moves, um, you mainly see gram negative bacilli in enterococcus. Diagnosis and treatment. So clinical indication is some very vague symptoms such as. Uh, back and neck pain with or without fever, lab studies, aspiration of uh, the disc space or vertebral bone, positive blood culture, increased CRP and ESR. Treatment is based on pathogen and treatment duration is 6 to 12 weeks. 
All right, lastly is the prosthetic joint infections. Definition is the presence of uh, sinus tract that communicates with prosthesis. Uh, acute inflammation on histopathology examination of periprosthetic tissue at the time of surgical debridement or prosthesis removal, which is highly suggestive. Uh, Perinolent without another known etiology surrounding the prosthesis, which is um, you need definitive e evidence. Two or more interoperative cultures or combination of perioperative culture that yield the same organism. Uh, growth of a virulent microorganism in a single specimen of tissue biopsy or synovial fluid. Etiology. Um, Prosthetic joint infection is infected by either a contagious spread or a metagenous spread. Uh, risk factors, surgical site infections, underlying malignancy, prior joint arthroplasty or surgery, immunosuppression, poor nutrition status, diabetes, and rheumatoid arthritis. Causative agents, staph aureus is the most prominent, followed by coagulase negative staph, um, gram, negative, gram negative bacilli, streptococci, or anaerobic organisms uh, can also be responsible. Sorry. Um, diagnosis or the workup of the patient. History of physical um, information about the pro prosthesis. Signs and symptoms such as joint pain, immobility with swelling, erythemia, and possible fever. Lab studies, uh, CRP, ASR, um, if both are abnormal. Um, um, PG, PJI is likely. So from a joint fluid analysis, uh, it should be performed in all patients with suspected acute PGI unless diagnosis is evident clinically and surgery is planned and antibiotics can be safely withheld prior to surgery. Uh, plain x-ray uh, images such as a CT, MRI, and PET are not routinely recommended. Uh, blood culture only if patient is febrile, uh, experiences acute onset of symptoms, or has a suspected pathogen that would make bloodstream infection more likely. Goals of therapy, eradication of infection, preserve mobility, and relieve the pain. Uh, so if it's um, MSSA, so if it's It was like, oh, dang, I'm going to stop early. Um, stop clock eye. Uh, hmm, medicine susceptible staph aureus. <laughs> you want to treat with nafcillin and ceph or cephin. An alternative is vanc, dapto, or linazolid. And you want to give rifampin with specific, with pathogen-specific IV antibiotic therapy. MRSA. You, um, the drug of choice is vancomycin. Some alternatives, though, is dapto and linazolid. And you also want to add a refinement to pathogen-specific regimen. Enterococcus, uh, which is uh, penicillin-susceptible, you want to uh, do penicillin or ampicillin. An alternative treatment is vanc, dapto, linazolid. Um, you also do want to do four to six weeks. Uh, aminoglycoside, which is optional, so like gin, amikacin, stuff like that. Um, in our caucus, that is penicillin resistant. You want to do vancomycin. An alternative agent is linazolid, and four to six weeks additional um, aminoglycoside is optional. Light one out again. The sensor is on the other side of the room. So, you know, my life is wonderful. <laughs> um, if it's pseudomonas arginosa, the preferred treatment is cefepime or marum. Alternative agent is cipro or ceftazidime, and you can do four to six weeks of aminoglycoside. Enterobacter, um, preferred is cefepime and marum, with a alternative treatment being cipro for four to six weeks. Enterobacter C, um, IV beta lactamase based on in vitro data or Cipro for four to six weeks. Beta hemolytic strep, you want to do penicillin or rocephin. 
um, an alternative is vancomycin. Um, but you really only want to do vancomycin if there's a case of allergy for um, and the total treatment duration is four to six weeks. Uh, P acnes. I don't even want to try to say the first word. Uh, say penicillin. Preferred treatment is penicillin with seven. Uh, alternative is clindamycin with vancomycin. Uh, for four to six weeks, you only want to use vancomycin if there is an allergy. So treatment of staph um, for the debridement and retention of the prosthesis. For our hips and knees, you want to do two to six weeks of IV, give her fampin with pathogen specific antibiotic therapy, um, follow with oral, antibi oral antibiotic and rifampin. Then uh, for three weeks of the hip and six months if there's a knee, three months if hip, six months if knee. Drug of choice is a beta lactam or a vink with uh, plus rifampin. Elbow, shoulder, and ankle, you want to treat it like a hip. Oral antibiotics that can be used with rifampin include fluoroquinolone, minocycline, doxycycline, Bactrim, Kefalexin, and Dicloxacillin. Uh, treatment after the resection of an arthroplasty. Regardless of the pathogen, you want to do two to four weeks of pathogen-specific IV or slightly bioavailable oral therapy is recommended. Six weeks duration is re recommended when a highly virulent pathogen, such as Staph aureus, is the causative agent. A rifampin combination is not required because you do not retain the prosthesis. Um, not required because there is no retained prosthesis uh, present to provide environment for a film formation. Only 24 to 48 hours of antibiotic required after amputation if all infective tissue is removed. Adverse drug effects, so with rifampin, you see hepatotoxicity uh, can cause a red-orange discoloration of body secretions. And rifampin is a potent CYP3A4 reducer, which causes uh, multiple drug-drug interactions, um, such as with birth control. So patients on birth control, you're gonna have to be like, you're gonna gotta stop that for a minute, I'm sorry use something else. <laughs> uh, with fluoroquinolone, you see um, photosensitivity, headache, and nausea, and clindamycin, you see a GI disturbance. Alright, that is all for bone and joint infections. Uh, enough talking videos for today, eh? I mean, I'll probably stream an actual game and not this, but... <laughs> because I need a break from it for a moment. Um, but have a good day and have fun.